Okay, so the next part of our week is called Schmien's Hook. It's a variety of hook out there. It's a plastic hook that we're going to be working with a little bit later in the quarter. We're going to make some modifications to this and do a, uh, a sweep feature on this in order to create another uh, hook attachment that's going to go with this. But for now, it's just a plastic part. So if you're looking at destroying, you might want to start down here at Material, and it's going to be ABS uh, PC. And uh, we're going to uh, put this together. So there's really only about two different parts that come with this. And this is kind of a design that involves uh, freehand sketching. In other words, all we're going to be doing, and we're not going to be uh, sketching out circles or rectangles in this. We're actually going to be starting with an arc uh, that's going to start down here at the origin. We're going to start with an arc. It's going to go on one side, transition to a line, back to an arc, back to a line. This one's going to be vertical. This line down here has got to have an angle. So there's our angle, 33 degrees. And then uh, we're going to transition back to an arc up here, back to a straight line again, and back to an arc up here at the top. Now, I'm not talking about anything on this side, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sketching all this out uh, along that vertical center line. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in a center line that's going to go out horizontally from the origin, right through the origin, uh, midpoint in the origin. And then we don't necessarily have to do a midpoint here, so we can pro probably just take that center line and start at the origin, and then go straight up. You want to make sure that the center line is off the model a little bit. So, you know, it's kind of off the model here by, a, you know, a very small amount. But it's always good to make it uh, exceed the model a little bit. Don't have it intersect uh, any portion of the model or the sketches that might be associated with that. You know, it just makes it more visible. And uh, it might trip you up later if you have, like, a midpoint uh, relationship up here in that arc. And uh, you might have to correct that later. You might go into error. So, yeah, when you do center lines, make sure you go off the model. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sketching everything over here on the left side, and we're going to mirror it to the right side by using that uh, center line that we have in here. And we're going to go ahead and extrude that. We're going to have a draft angle on that, so you want to make sure you uh, look in here for that draft angle. Right here we have a 20-degree draft angle for that base feature, and then we're going to put in our hook. So we'll talk about the hook here in just a minute. Let's go and get our base feature together. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, SOLIDWORKS template file. Yours is going to be an actual part file. Mine's a template file. But uh, we want to make sure that our units are here. They're going to be in inches, too. So we're going to go back to the inch pound second. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. So if you look at the drawing again, uh, what plane are we going to be uh, sketching on? Well, the plane is going to be the front plane. So if you look at the front, front view here, of which we have the section over here that uh, kind of shows that a little bit better off the right view. So if you look at a section view, a section view pretty much like cuts the model in half. Maybe this is kind of a weird way of doing it, but we're actually cutting the model right in the back edge of that thing, and then we're taking a look and look at it. We're taking a look at it from the very back rather than the front. So this is kind of like the back view here. That's what we're looking at. But what it does is it demonstrates uh, what the base features are going to be in that sketch. It's going to help us uh, put that together. So we have a front view, or have a section view over here, section A. Kind of cuts it, but uh, really it's cutting it right at that edge, and we're looking at the, the very back of this. And uh, that's what we're going to be using in order to put that together. And then our thickness is going to be a quarter of an inch. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with our uh, front plane. We're going to go to sketch, and we're going to put it in our center line. So we're going to start with the midpoint line. We're going to take that midpoint line and make that horizontal from there. Then we're going to go in here and just pick center line, and we're just going to go up from the origin and just kind of go up with a middle mouse button. If you scroll that a little bit, that's going to uh, allow you to uh, scroll in and out of your drawing. So give that a try. It's kind of fun. Let's go ahead and click on that model line and turn that into construction geometry. So remember, construction geometry is not considered when uh, you're uh, putting your model together. It's, uh, you know, it's not going to create any sort of 3D form or hole, uh, but it's used as reference geometry. That's a test question, of course. So we're going to start with an arc at the very bottom. We're going to start with a three-point arc. There's a lot of different arcs we could choose from. Three-point arc allows us to start at that point and sketch that arc up here. And then we can manipulate that arc once we uh, click it out a couple times and actually put that in place. So let's just drop that right here, right now, and talk about this a little bit. In order to make this arc transition over here to this side, once we do that mirror, we want to make sure that this midpoint of the arc, which is this guy over here, we want to put that on that center line. If we do that, that's going to make that tangent over there. Another way of doing that, if we want to pull that off, is just to take that arc and that line, that center line, to make that tangent too, does the same thing. So let's go ahead and put in that, uh, that other line. So we're going to put a line. We're going to exaggerate that. We want to make this uh, tangent. So we're going to select both of those at the same time. It's real quick to do that. 
And we're just going to go up here to tangent. We're going to make that tangent. Now remember, this uh, angle over here is going to be 33 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and click between that line and this line. If you do that, if it's not parallel or horizontal to each other, uh, it gives it's going to put in an angle dimension on that. So we're going to type in 33 on that. Now we're going to put a dimension on this. So it's still blue. It's not fully defined, even though we've uh, provided some sketch relations in here. And that tangent relationship, you're going to see that on your next WDE on the TCS portion of that. So make sure you keep that in mind what that is. But if you pull on any point, like what do you need to do to a blue sketch, an underdefined sketch, underdefined sketch, to find out uh, what you need to do? Well, you can see there's still a lot of flexibility here. And I think one thing that might tighten this up is to put a radius on that. Put a radius on that fillet so or that uh, arc. And if you look down here, it's going to be 0.3. So let's go ahead and put that on and see if that helps us. We're going to go up here to Smart Dimension, and we're going to put 0.3 in that. That's not what we want. See, that's blue. That's light blue. It's already selected. So it's going to think that, you know, it's going to put a dimension between that and that arc. So we're going to have to do Escape once to take out that selection that we had and just click on that arc in here, and we're going to make that 0.3. So that makes it quite small, and we're going to go ahead and pull this down a little bit too, pull that dimension down kind of zoom in on that and that's going to show us what we're looking at so it is black but the endpoint of that line not black we can still move that around so that's going to be uh, approximating uh, what that uh, sketch is going to look like so we kind of zoomed in and kind of condensed things a little bit and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transition to this arc over here it's not defined in this side but it is on that side so that dimension probably should be moved over then we're going to go horizontal or vertical on that line and essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be defining this as we go. You want to make sure you get this fully defined as you go. And uh, what that's going to do is it's going to, you're, you're going to know that right from the very beginning that you're on the right track. If you wait to the very end of this, put all these elements in here and then try to define it then, you might run into errors. It might be a little bit more difficult and time consuming to try to uh, repair. So we have another arc in here. One arc we can use in here instead of the three-point arc we could use the tangent arc. And if we click on that point and sketch that out, you notice that we're going to get that tangent relationship down here. We're going to sketch that out here, and then we're going to go straight with a line from there. So we have that uh, tangent relationship in here that uh, we're desiring. That puts that in there automatically with that tangent arc. And now we're going to put in, I don't want to select the midpoint here, so we're going to do escape once, and then put in our smart dimension, now it's going to be one inch. So now a straight line in here, going to make that tangent. So yeah, now I picked up that tangent relationship right away because we're really close to being, you know, for that tangent relationship. We we're really close to having it there because we had it almost going vertical and it was really close to that arc there. So it just assumed we wanted to make that tangent. So let's go ahead and look at this one more time. Uh, we could probably put in this dimension two and a quarter between that side and this side. And remember how we do that? We don't have the other side defined yet, but if we put in a dimension between that line and this line, here's a single dimension. That's our double dimension. We could put that in there. We can type in uh, 2.25. That puts that into place. So now it's uh, kind of coming together here. It's all black except for the end point of that line in here. So we're going to still kind of approximate the way that looks like uh, here in that sketch. Then we're going to transition into another arc in a straight line and another arc on top. So that arc is going to be 3.375, uh, 3 eighths of an inch. And then that line is going to, uh, and that arc on top is going to be uh, 1 inch again. So we could conceivably make this arc up here equal to that arc down here. I think we'll probably do that. So let's put in that arc. Again, tangent arc, we can uh, put that in here. Uh, or another way of doing that, try this. Go to line and put in a line. But to think about that line, it'll come out as a line. But if you go back, you know, right back to the origin where that circle is, it turns into an arc. And that's kind of fun. So if you're doing a bunch of lines and arcs in a series and a chain, right after, one right after another, that could be really convenient to do. So we're going to put that in place, and then right after that, we can put in a line. So notice this. We didn't get the tangent relationship up here. We're going to make sure you do that. We're going to select both of, the, both of those, make that tangent, but it automatically made this a tangent relationship. So let's put in some more dimensions. This is going to be 0.375. So it's still got some flexibility here. 
and then we have that line over here and uh, we have another arc in the top which is going to be one inch so let's go ahead and put that arc in here this may not get fully defined until we put in these last elements in here so let's go back to tangent arc let's go ahead and click on that bring that over here and you'll notice that with that kind of put it right on top of that line a vertical line but we want to force it so we're going to go ahead and put that there that's going to define that we're going to make this arc and this arc we're going to make those equal to each other not fully defined, but what we can do up here, if you look at our uh, sketch over here that we're referencing, our section A, there is a uh, dimension up here that defines the very top of that arc down to the very bottom. We can probably select that center line in the bottom, and that should put that in place. So, don't want to select that point, but let's go ahead and select the arc itself. We probably could select that point, but let's select the arc first, and then we're going to go ahead and put that in place. And we're just going to leave that as an arbitrary dimension. But remember, we can take the leader line in this, go over here to leaders, and this time we're going to go ahead and make that on the bottom. We're going to make that a maximum rather than a minimum, which is down here. We're in the center of that arc. We're going to make it the maximum of that arc. And now we're going to take that value and we're going to make that 3. And notice everything turned black. It's fully defined. Our sketch 1 over here is fully defined. And now we're almost ready to go. So next step, a sketch mirror. We're going to select everything over here. And as long as we don't select center lines, if we select that line too with the control key, go up here to mirror entities, now we have it on the other side. And oh, should be black. So what happened? What happened? What happened is up here is we lost a point up here. So we don't have that point. It's no longer an arc on one side. It's an arc that starts here and ends over there. But how do you know that for sure? One thing to do is you could take uh, points, uh, some of these blue points, and just pull on them and see what happens. So that may not have uh, made an effect on the top, but it definitely made an effect on the bottom because the very same thing happened on the bottom. What we used to have over here was an end point of that arc, which stopped here. Now that arc is continuous over to that side, so that coincident relationship that, won't, that we once had is no longer there. So how do we fix that? Well, we can grab that and put that right on top of the origin. Bang makes it fully defined. So how do you find that? So if I do control Z one more time, if I take any of these blue points in here and move that around, you can see the flexibility that we have. The form that we have sketched in here stays intact. It doesn't get all stretched out, but the only thing it's and it uh, moves left and right, it does not move uh, up and down. So you know that all we have to do is make that relationship with the origin. If we just drag that down there to the origin, it makes it fully defined. Okay, so features. We're going to go ahead and uh, extrude that out. We're going to extrude that forward. Let's go ahead and take a look at our drawing to see what it says. Base feature with a 20 degree draft angle per dimension from uh, section AA. We're going to extrude to the front. And we're going to look at our mass properties here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to extrude to the front. Instead of our default value of a tenth of an inch, we're going to make that uh, a quarter of an inch. Draft angle. And our draft angle from uh, that top view in there is going to be 20 degrees. And we're going to go to the green check mark. And there we have it so far. So here's the, here's the moment. After all that work, we're going to go to evaluate, go to mass properties. What do we have? Let's go to our options. Looks like we're looking up to four decimals after the, after the, or four units after the decimal. So we're going to go ahead and increase that by two. And then we're going to take our uh, slider over here and put that up to the highest. And let's see what we have. So the mass is uh, 0 0.0403 pounds. Kind of a real small hook. There's not a whole lot there, so it's not uh, very heavy. And, uh, okay, well, now it says it's 0 .0442. So we don't quite have that right. So let's go ahead and go back in our model and see what we did wrong. Okay, so we're not getting the right, right mass properties. Like, what do we do? What, what, what do we do? I mean, one thing to do is check your feature manager tree over here and make sure you have your material selected. You, even though we talked about this, him and us, we didn't do anything about it. It's always a good habit to establish your material at the very beginning before you even get started. So let's go ahead and edit material. And uh, let's close out the steel folder and open up the plastics folder. We're looking at ABS PC. And PC uh, defines uh, a certain uh, chemical composition that's... Uh, you know, part of that ABS, but uh, you also might think about it that as being pretty clear, perhaps. If we go to Apply and Close, you'll notice that our model is somewhat transparent. 
Now I have my, uh, in my drawing over here, I have my uh, hook uh, to be kind of a blue color. You can color it whatever you like. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and open uh, this up. This is going to be our display uh, manager over here. And uh, you wanted to uh, perhaps go up here to that beach ball, which is white right now, polycarbonate. And we can go ahead and apply that. So that's probably what the PC uh, refers to. It's ABS uh, with polycarbonate uh, properties to it. But let's go to appearance. Let's go ahead and change our color. I'm going to change mine to like maybe a light blue, like what we had before. And go to the green check mark. But you also know something uh, different over here too, is that we have this thing called transparency. If you rush your cursor over these elements over here, it kind of tells you what they're going to be. That's uh, transparency. It's going to be appearances, display mode, and some other elements that we're going to cover a little bit later in the corner. But if we don't want that to be transparent, it might be kind of tricky modeling with that on. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So polycarbonate is uh, kind of like a plexiglass or glass. It is transparent, but we can turn off that transparent quality just by clicking on that. Now let's go ahead and take that color. I'm going to make mine just a little bit lighter because it's just a little bit easier for to do that. So we're going to go to the green check mark. And if we go back to our uh, evaluate, go to mass properties, uh, yeah, it's kind of close, but I don't think it's quite right. So let's go ahead and pull in our drawing, see what we're looking for. It should be 0 .0442, not 431. So here's a little lesson on how to define errors. So we're going to take our BOSS 3 We're actually going to rename that before we go into this. is going to be our base feature. We're going to name that to that, uh, that, you know, that name. Then we're going to go into our sketch one. We're going to right click and add as we open that with that down arrow. We're going to go into edit sketch and take a look at this. One thing to note about this drawing over here, the sketch that we have, is that it doesn't really conform very easily to this one. What we're missing in here is a 70 degree uh, dimension between that line and that vertical line. So let's go ahead and put that in. And we know that because this is fully defined, it's not going to like us very well if we do that. We could do it on this side or we can do it on that side. Either way would work. And you want to make sure you don't select the midpoint. So let's do escape once and reselect that line and put in that value. So it says it's 57. That's not quite what we're looking for. We're looking for 70. If we put 70 in there, it's probably going to give us more material. It'll probably give us the right answer. But now we get this dialog box up here. You can see in our sketch in the background that we have some colors that we're not used to. And because they're yellow and red sometimes, it implies the thing's on fire, and fire is danger. And you want to avoid that, but, you know, don't, don't panic. Don't go back and try to redraw this thing. We're, we're going to go ahead and fix these errors, and that's a, you know, it's a good thing to do. You, you learn to recognize errors. It's all part of modeling in SolidWorks, and then learning how to fix these. So right now, we can make that a driven dimension. So if you go to OK, then everything's black and everything's OK again. And what that is, is a driven dimension. If you were to like, maybe change some of these other values, maybe to 4 up here, you know, that doesn't really change that, but uh, we can change that back. If we were to change some of these other dimensions in here, this one will probably do it. If we make that 2 rather than 1, and you know, that driven dimension is going to be a different value. It doesn't drive the model. It's driven by the model geometry. So I'm going to do Control-Z, bring that back. Uh, and another option in here is to take that dimension, instead of having it be driven by the model geometry, we're going to make it drive the model geometry, and that's where we're going to get our yellows back. So what is, it, what is it conflicting with? It's conflicting with this uh, dimension down here, which you want to keep. And on these lines, it's conflicting with those lines too. Anything that's yellow or red are things that are in conflict. And one thing to note here too, I don't know where this came from, is we have a perpendicular relationship between this line here and that line down there. Like, why? You know, SolidWorks just put it in there automatically just because we were probably really close to having those perpendiculars. So it just thought, well, you know, I thought you may have wanted it, so I put it in there. That's what SolidWorks is thinking. So let's get rid of that. And again, just like I demonstrated in class yesterday, if you just rest your cursor over that, the magenta line show you uh, what's, uh, what that perpendicular relationship is. It's not just a single relationship down here. But it's got another portion of that relationship up here, and it's showing you what it is. So that's really long-winded. Let's go ahead and click on one of those sketch relations and delete it. So now we can type in the right value in there. We're going to make that 70. That looks a lot better. It looks a lot closer to this than it did before. Pull that out. Let's go ahead and rebuild that, see what it looks like. And let's get our mass properties back again. Mass properties again. So this time it's uh, 0 0.442. And a drawing says 
0 0.442. Let's uh, check the center of mass. Center of mass is going to be off by an, uh, just uh, one direction, actually two directions. In a Y, it's going to be 1.6973. Yep, 1.6973, and then uh, the Z is going to be off uh, by 0.1217. And that's what we have over here, too. So that's it. That's the first uh, feature that we have in this. Okay, so let's put in our next feature. Our next feature is going to be uh, the hook, the hook portion of our model. So we have the base back here in the back, our base feature, and then we're going to put the hook on top. Hook is going to be sketched on the right plane. So we're looking at the front plane here. Hook's going to be uh, placed on the right plane. We're going to use existing model geometry to help us put those sketch elements together. So first thing you might want to do, and I have this highlighted on top, as we have this called is part number one. We always uh, usually talk about feature manager tree. We're working away from the top of the tree down to the bottom. And the very top of the tree is a part name. So it's always a pretty good idea early in your modeling process is to go ahead and name that and uh, go ahead and save it. So let's go up to file. Let's go to save as. I'm going to call that uh, Shemin's hook. Or you can call it week two hook or week, uh, you know, something to script. It should have the word hook in there. So when I uh, am looking at your files early next week, then I know what I'm looking at when I see that uh, file. So you don't want to call it like final project or week two project. That's not descript enough. Try to get something in there that is descript. So, and right now I think I call it, let's go ahead and uh, save that as something a little bit, um, a little bit more descript than just Shemin's. We're going to call that Shemin's hook. And I think I already have that in there, so we're going to save right on top of it and that'll be fine. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's put this, uh, let's put this together and add in our hook. So we're going to go to the right plane, we're going to go normal to it, control eight, and let's begin to sketch. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be sketching this item over here. So this is our detail A, or detail B. Detail B is usually, uh, you know, it's gotten a little bit, expanded a little bit, it tells you the scale is now one and a half to one, and it uh, makes it a little bit bigger than the sheet scale. And then, uh, which is uh, one to one, so it's a little bit bigger. So we're going to put in all these elements. We're going to start down here at this point, sketching a line, go into an arc, back into a line, into another arc, and then a line down here to complete that with all these dimensions in place. We're going to keep that handy so we can refer to that. So you want to make sure you're square on the right plane. Make sure you're doing the control eight. Go up here to sketch. Uh, we're going to go to line, and if we haven't selected that plane yet, let's go ahead and do that by taking our feature fly out and selecting the right plane. So now we're going to start in here. We're going to select that edge of the model geometry, sketch this up, and remember we can get that tangent arc by simply by staying within that line command and just going back to uh, where that point is over here to get that arc in place. We're going to make sure it's going off in the right direction, and we're going to go over here like that. And in an arbitrary location, just drop it over here. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to arc that up and pick up that line in here and connect that. So let's go ahead and uh, put in our sketch relations in here. This one's going to be tangent, coincident down here, vertical, coincident, tangent, and it looks like we're okay with that. So let's put in our dimensions between this point and the origin down here. You want to make sure you have a dimension in there, and you want to make sure it's not that dimension. You don't want to go off at an angle. You want to make sure you maintain that orientation. So we could go up, we can go off at an angle or we can go off to the left. So we want to make sure we go off to the left. We're going to make that point 0.65, 5 eighths of an inch. Then we have a degree, degree angle in here, so we're going to put, click those two elements. We're going to make that 30 degrees. Uh, between this arc over here and that line over here, that's going to be one inch. So remember, we're not going to pick the center. We're going to pick the arc itself. We're going to drop that in an arbitrary location, go to the green check mark, and we're going to go over here to leaders, and we're going to make that a, a maximum condition. And we're going to go back to that dimension, we're going to type in 1. So the radius is 2 on that, on the top of the hook. We're going to make that 0.2. I shouldn't say 2, it is 0.2. And then we have another angle in here. So between this line and this line, we're going to make that 28 degrees. And now we're going to take this, we're going to exaggerate that a little bit, bring that up, bring this over here like that. I think with this arc over here and that vertical line, we're going to need to make that tangent. Now it says over here in this drawing, I'm just looking at the drawing on my screen over here, uh, this arc over here and that arc over here are going to be equal. So we're going to apply the equal relationship to that. So we're going to uh, click on that arc, 
click in this arc. We're going to get that shortcut menu. We're going to make that equal to. Now we have that in place. So everything is black. Everything is fully defined, even though Sketch 2 has got that minus sign on it. If we were to rebuild that, incorporate that into our feature tree, you'll see that it's gray in the background, and that minus sign disappears. So now we're going to come back to that. We're going to select this, or we're going to select the sketch over here, and then we jump right into Features. We're going to do an extrude of boss space. This is going to be mid-plane, and we're going to go, go ahead and go back to our drawing and uh, read that and see what it says. So for the hook feature, for the dimensions uh, from detail B, which is down here, the mass is going to be, uh, you know, that and that. It's going to be mid-plane extrusion. Well, that's what we're looking for. It is going to be a mid-plane extrusion because you want to have something like this up here. You don't want to have a favor on one side or the other. You want to make sure it's mid-plane. But uh, thickness over here is going to be half an inch. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Mid-plane, half an inch. And if we rotate that to the side, now you can see that. So if we didn't do mid-plane, if we want to do blind, it's going to favor one side. Flip it, it's going to favor the other side. Mid-plane is the appropriate choice. And we're going to go to the green chuck mark. Once we have that in place, let's go back to our mass properties. As we were almost checking before, it's going to remember the settings we have. 0 0.0629 is going to be the value for the mass. And let's see what we have in here. Kind of hard to read. Yeah, point zero. Uh, 0.629 over there is uh, what we're looking for in pounds. And the center of the mass is 1.7432 in the Y. See if we have that, 1.7432. Correct. And then 0 0.2724 in the Z direction. So we have that correct. Okay, so the next feature, if we read our drawing, is going to be the draft feature. So if you read this, our step number three draft feature is a separate feature. See video, so I have another video about how to do this. But you can probably just look at this and catch most of it. I go into a little bit more detail in that video, so you might want to take a look at that. But we're going to choose the front face as our neutral uh, face. Then each side of the hook, so we're going to choose that as our neutral face. Then each side of the hook is going to apply the draft to that at that edge. And the draft angle is going to be 3 degrees. So typically about 2 or 3 degrees is what you need in a plastic injection molding is the way I uh, remember it. So let's go and rename our features. That's always a good idea to do. So we're going to call this our hook or our hook feature if you want to call it that. That's what it says in the drawing. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So the, what do you, how, do you, how do you get a draft in there? Typically what we do is we apply that draft uh, to, um, to the feature itself. But because we're extruding this feature off in a different direction, that draft feature is going to provide kind of a gap in there. So look at the other video that's on uh, the website for the week two portion of the website. You'll see how that works. It kind of gives you an undesirable outcome. So take a look at that. But here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a, a draft feature. And go ahead and take a look at it. It's probably over here on the right-hand side. If we click on draft over here, and we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail because we're going to cover this in different videos later in the class. But uh, starting from the top, we're going to way down on the Properties Manager. We're going to make that 3 degrees. If you refresh your mouse over this, it's talking about the neutral plane. Neutral plane is going to be that front face. So what that means is that the draft is going to start from that face depending on the selections we're going to select after that. So we're going to go ahead and select this face and then that face for the third element. So we have three elements to choose from, a draft angle, neutral plane, a neutral face, and then the two faces that we want to have a draft angle on. It's not giving us a preview here, but if we go to a, if we go to the green check mark and leave all the other default settings in there, now you can see that. Now you can see the draft angle if you look at that from the very front. So we're going to call this uh, the, it's called the draft feature on the drawing. So let's go ahead and just call that draft feature if you want, or front draft or hook draft or something like that. But try to, at the very least, uh, rename your features to something that might be very similar and descriptive to what it really is or uh, what it might say in the drawing. So let's go back to Mass Properties again and just double, double check our work with Evaluate Mass Properties. We're looking at uh, 0 .0614 over here. And it looks like, yep, that's what it is over here in the drawing. So let's pull our drawing in place. And then the center of mass is 1.7361. 1.7361, that's correct. And then the Z direction is going to be 2594, 2594 there, so we're in pretty good shape. Okay, so the, uh, the last or the next, the last element we're going to put in here is step number four. It's going to be zero, or yeah, it's going to be zero. It's going to be a fillet. It's going to be a fillet radius, a uh, feature fillet. 
And the radius is going to be a tenth of an inch, as it says over here. And we're going to do that on the front face and a left and right face of the hook feature. So it's, it's going to be the same selections that we had for the draft. So let's do that. Let's go to Features, Feature Fillet. Uh, let's go to Fillet, tenth of an inch. We're going to stick with the default setting. Items to fillet are going to be the front face and the two side faces of the hook. And then we're going to go to the green check mark. And now we have that in place. So we're going to call this uh, perhaps our front fillet. Something to script. Let's go ahead and take a look at our mass properties. So evaluate mass properties. Let's go ahead and bring our uh, drawing back in here and make sure we have everything the same. So it says over here the mass is 0 0.0609, which we have. Y is 1.7345. Y is 1.7345 over here, and then Z is uh, 2555 after the decimal, which we have. So that's how you design this part called Schmeen's Hook.